Hey everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and time once again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Well, today we're going to talk about guide liners. In other episodes, we've gone into the false guide replacement when we use a core drill and a core reamer, or a combination core drill reamer called a dreamer, to open up the ID of the valve guide to accept a false guide. Today, we're going to leave that false guide in place and uh, or should i say the integral guide in place because these original cast iron chevrolet cylinder heads had the valve seat and the valve guide cast as part of an integral uh, component of the cylinder head with guide liner installation it, it, it's a very uh, simple direct process to uh, get a to z uh, for the entire uh, procedure to get these in. What I like most about it is I can do it on a workbench. I really don't have to have a seat and guide machine uh, per se to do this installation. It's pretty simple all the way through. We first, one of the first and most important tools that we that we offer in the kit is the boring tool. This is actually going to open up the existing dimension of the whole 30,000s. And uh, we have a, a, a reamer bushing here that we use uh, as part of the uh, centering setup utilizing these centering cones, and I'll get into that here in just a minute. Once we bore that valve guide uh, ID, uh, opening up those 30 thousandths, then we need to come back through and actually brush out all the chips and get rid of the debris that happens uh, or left over inside of that valve guide board. From there, our valve guide installation tool here is where we actually uh, put the guide liner on the end of that and drive it into the valve guide bore. From there, we have to size the ID, and we use sizing balls, a round, spherical, precision, manufactured, carbide sizing balls. What I like about the sizing ball is as it rotates, it's doing a couple of things. It's, it's actually uh, pushing the valve guide into the board, kind of helps seating it, and at the same time, it's setting an oil clearance that you decide what you want to run on your intake exhaust valve and the sizing balls are pushed through that guide liner with this tool here. Once we get the ID set, then we've got to come back through because we may have a little bit of protrusion. Uh, when we drive the, the valve guide liner in, it's going to stop and be flush with the bore, but we might have some sticking out the other end. And that's where we have a trim tool that comes in. It has a little pilot that'll get us inside. Uh, the valve guide and then these uh, special cutting flutes here will actually trim down that to whatever size we're looking for. Most of the time we're going to make it flush with the combustion side of the valve guide bore and we're going to make it flush on the spring side uh, with that valve guide bore as well. Uh, but like I said, the beauty of it all is that I can do all this on a workbench and I don't need a heavy duty sophisticated guide machine. Uh, now, as I mentioned uh, earlier, these centering cones, and these centering cones are 60 degree centering cones, and that's where this drill bushing, uh, reamer bushing, whatever you want to call it, with this O-ring actually fits inside of there, okay? And then through that, we can find the centermost part of that valve seat. Uh, this 60 degree cone allows us to try to find it, uh, walk around. The pilot on the bottom of this tool goes into the valve guide. This helps uh, center onto the valve seat itself. The O-ring helps secure the drill bushing inside of the ID of this uh, centering cone. And then we're more uh, assured that we're gonna shoot the exact center line according to that valve seat of where that 30 thousandths over four should be. So that's what I really like about these uh, centering cones. And these are available in a kit, as you can see laid out here, or they're also available Digitally. They each have a range as far as an A to B dimension of valve seat ID that they'll cover, but all of them have a 60 degree of cone uh, uh, increment to, to find that centering part of the valve seat so that we can get to the centermost part of the valve guide. After we get uh, 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 ready to go, I just want to let you know that, you know, simple tools. Uh, Here's a battery powered drill that I'm going to use in a part B of this episode. That'll get my drill and carbide boring tool to open up that whole 30 thousandths. As I clean that guide board, then I'm using the Matic hammer, and these are available uh, just about anywhere. 
of these pneumatic hammers. And what they'll do with the guide installation tool is drive that guide through the bore and have it stop at a specific dimension according to the, the bounce uh, back off of that uh, guide tool when it hits bottom right there. Uh, you might say, well, that's all fine and dandy, Dave. You, you bored the hole, you've cleaned the hole, you've inserted the valve guide, you've sized that valve guide bore now to set the oil clearance. You've also trimmed it so that it's at the right height so we don't have too much sticking out of the spring side of the cylinder head or any sticking down in the combustion side of the cylinder head. And everything's said and done. We can go ahead and uh, finish up our valve job now, cut our angles or grind our angles on the valve seat, and we should have a spot-on first-class valve job if everything is done correctly. Now, here you are. You've, uh, you've done these heads. They've gone out the door. 50, 60, 100,000 miles later, here they come walking back in, and you find a cylinder head just like this one here that already has these valve guide liners. You might say, well, gosh, how am I going to get those rascals out? Well, it's real simple. We've got a tool specifically designed. This is a guide re removing tool. We don't spin it in a drill. It's used, used with a hammer, either an air hammer like this. It's got a drive tool right here. And by pushing this through the valve guide itself, we're actually going to split. These little carbide pieces here will actually cut that valve guide all the way through. It eliminates the crush on it. We can quickly pull that out with it set of needle nose pliers or something along those lines. So the main takeaway I want you to have uh, on this is the simplicity of the installation, the understanding of the procedure A, B, C, D to get all the way through. But there's one more thing, very, very important, and that's the dimension of this valve guide bore when you're done. As I mentioned, these are all 30 overliners. So we're going to blow those holes open uh, 30 thousandths. On a 516th, for an example, we'll start at a 312, you know, 312 uh, dimension. Opening that up, we can't have a bore any bigger than 341 to 3425. 1130 seconds starts at 343. That means the bore of that hole, when we're done, opening it up, has got to be 372 to 3735. When the 38, it starts at 375. And again, do the math, add the 30 thousandths to it. We've got to have a hole of 404 or 4055. And quickly on the 7 millimeter, it starts at 275. Our, our hole there, ID, needs to be 308 to 3095. And on the 8 millimeter, which starts at 315, we need to end up at 346 or 3475. So if we keep those dimensions in mind, our guide will be held correctly in position. It will allow us to size it. Uh, accurately to the dimension we're looking for, those carbide sizing balls, and like I said, the beauty of it is we can do it all here on the work. So if you have questions, you can give us a call at 1-800-533-8010, or better yet, catch us on the lab. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.